Oi. Health critical. Oh. <laughs> Man, this thing's got guns everywhere. Yep. Oh no! Oh no! I was so close. Low health. Oh. Man. G'day guys, welcome back to the channel, and welcome back for another episode of Space Survival. So at the end of the last episode, I basically got the rover complete, completed this solar tower, and then used this custom turret controller, using the new beta to then make this into a solar tower that actually tracks the sun so that's why it's constantly moving around at the moment however i think it is time that i address the elephant in the room so many people in the comments pointed out that this update is only going to last for a week and then after that they're going to pull it and then what may occur at that point is that whatever save you have used with this beta update may then become corrupted so that's not exactly good news. I must admit, I am a little bit disappointed in Keen Software. I I think, personally, that information should have been the very first thing they should have pointed out in their live stream. Maybe they did point it out at some point in the live stream, and I just didn't see it. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it kind of sucks that they didn't tell you that at the very start of the stream. That information would have been quite helpful. So what I'm going to attempt to do is probably grind down this here block, um, get rid of this whole scenario where this thing is following the sun because the batteries on this rover should be charged. So as long as I get rid of this block and then disable the beta, then I'm hoping that will be enough to save this save, if that makes any sense. But I guess we'll just have to kind of wait and see what happens. If not, then I have a lot of work to do behind the scenes to get to the same point without the update. I'll have to get a programmable block and set up a script, of which I think I will actually do that if I manage to successfully save this world. Alright guys, so hopefully I'll be back in a moment, back in the same world that I'm in now. Okay guys, welcome back. So it turns out that the entirety of episode 3 was kind of lost. So what I had to do, well, essentially what had happened is by me downloading the beta and then using that on the episode 3 save, when I then removed the beta, it's essentially completely corrupted it. So what that means is that I had to do all of the work that was in episode 3 all over again. So, I have the rover pretty much where it was before. Um, Energy low. There are a little bit of differences like this thruster here is in a different position. Um, these blocks here are probably a little bit different. This thruster here is orientated a little bit differently. But essentially, everything is pretty much exactly the same. It's just in a slightly different location and the blocks are slightly different and this solar panel is doing weird things. So what I've gone ahead and done in the meantime is I have also, so I've redone all of this but I haven't done it in creative mode so I didn't just go ahead and say okay well I'll just build all of this stuff in creative mode then come back and reload the save. I actually redid everything all over again, so I went to the asteroid, mined the nickel, came back, mined the silicon, refined that, built all the solar panels, built the solar tower, etc, etc. So it is fully survival, everything that I've done, and I have paid dearly for my mistake. However, what I have done instead of the turret controller block with the beta mode activated and allowing it to track the sun, I have gone ahead and activated Izzy's solar alignment script by using this here pro programmable block. Now, what I did have to do is move the sun manually um, using creative mode tools. So if you go Alt F10, you can kind of see like here you can move the time of day offset. Now when I did that, the tracking script didn't actually fully align to the sun. So what I had to do, and you guys might have to do this in your world, is you basically put this realign into the argument and then you hit run. And then obviously it's aligned because 
what it thought it was was nighttime mode and it actually says in the description for this script that when it's not on a planet it isn't aware of the sunrise and sunset so i don't think it really works if you move the sun okay so let us begin with the episode let's stop talking about all of the dramas that i've had and let's get on with stuff so all right the rover so i believe it does have enough thrust um we have six ion thrusters here so that should hopefully be enough to lift it up energy critical in space even though we're in what 0 0.07 gravity i don't think that's a lot of gravity that we need to really deal with um somebody pointed out an interesting thing in the comments section and that was that i need to make sure that this ore detector and this large rotor part doesn't exceed the weight of the rotor itself or sorry rotor rover because if that is the case then it has a liability to tip over and do some really funky stuff now i have calculated the weight of the rotor part and that ore detected there and it works out to be about 2295 kilos so about 2300 kilos and that's fine now if i jump in the cockpit for this i can see that this thing weighs 207,000 kilos but it actually doesn't that is the total weight of everything that's here. So let's exit out of this cockpit. And what I'm going to do is I... Well, no, sorry. First, what we're going to do is go into this co cockpit. And you can see that at the bottom here on my hotbar, I've added the ion thrusters and the atmospheric thrusters there to turn them on or off. So I am going to turn on the ion thrusters. I'm going to exit the cockpit. And you can kind of see that these thrusters will be going crazy... No, they're not this time. So what I'm going to do is grind away this rotor and hopefully it has enough thrust to keep itself up. So let's get rid of this rotor and see what happens. Well, I think so far it's looking pretty good. So then let's get rid of those blocks and we are now floating. Okay, so how are we looking here? So this thing weighs 31,363 kilos including... I believe I could be wrong here but probably including this weight here if not then you know this thing weighs 10 times the amount the rover itself weighs 10 times the amount of this ore detector and this rotor part here so we have enough thrust to keep this thing level so if I now the problem is I don't have thrusters pushing myself down which is fine it should just sink down because it's it doesn't have any thrust kind of holding it up and we have our three gyros like i did before so now the only thing i need to do is calculate if the amount of thrusters that i have installed on this thing right now is enough to lift the total weight of 31,400 oddish odd-ish kilos um another person also pointed out or it might have actually been the same person that i should probably go ahead and put a survival kit on this thing and quite honestly i certainly agree with that statement um <laughs> the only question is where do i actually put it uh probably should have planned this thing out a little bit better i guess we could just you know slap it here on the top and i might actually just do that because honestly i'm only really going to use it as a respawn point although i could maybe just leave it and then if in my own stupidity i end up running into something and killing myself or my character dies then maybe that's just a repercussion that i have to fly back down to the planet and then find the rover all over again the one thing i definitely do need though is i need an antenna on this thing so that if i do happen to get lost or if i die and i end up back in space then i can actually go ahead and find this thing again so let us go ahead and put the components for this on the build planner all right so we got this on the build planner let's put everything to production which shouldn't take too long because we don't really have that many things to build and there we go everything is built so we shall withdraw that and now where do i put the antenna i think i might just go ahead and place it here in the front it is a shame that the survival kit is so big because yeah, I just really didn't plan for placing that anywhere. Now, whereabouts can I put this? I do believe that there are some spare 
block spaces in here somewhere so if I can maneuver my character into the right position I should hopefully be able to place this down although my character really doesn't seem to be wanting to play ball here so maybe perhaps what we can do is get rid of this block here this block and then I can get in there a little bit ah, fine I will get rid of those blocks there and then I should hopefully be able to place our antenna in there somewhere weird why won't it let me place it there all right well fine I'll place it there then and then what we'll do is we'll place our two by one tip over the top of that like I said, it doesn't really need to look pretty, it just needs to kind of be functional to work. But yeah, I was kind of trying to make it look a little bit prettier than it was before. Given the fact that I had the opportunity to kind of, I wouldn't say redo it completely, but you know, kind of do it a second time. Cool, so we have our antenna. So let's jump in the cockpit here. Let's find our antenna. So I'll probably set the broadcast radius to its maximum, which is like 50 kilometers, which should be fine. Um, and then we will... I don't even know what to name this thing. Oh, there is one thing. The most important thing that I forgot to do. And let's try and do this. So I need to change the color of this thing. Now, there was a new camouflage. Let's go for the woodland camo, but let's go for a yellow, and then maybe try and make that like a really dark brown or something like that. Very similar to the color that I had in Wasteland Survival. All right, let's go with that and see how that color looks. Awesome, all right. And uh, not quite the color I was going for. Let's try something else. Maybe I'm going to try something a little bit darker. Uh, yep, I think that's about perfect. All right, let's try this. Control, shift, middle mouse button. Uh, maybe a little bit too dark. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But yeah, it certainly looks a lot better than it did in blue. Or maybe, <laughs> maybe it doesn't. Let's try. You know what? Let's try the digital camo. Camo. Alright, so that is that rover in digital camo. I don't know if it actually looks any better. I think maybe I might make it just a tiny bit darker. Yeah, I think that's looking a bit nicer. Alright, let's recolor that. Recolor the rotor part, which I don't think really matters. Let's do the wheels too, because why not? Cool. Alright, so I think I'm relatively happy with that. It looks okay-ish. It, it's not the best looking thing in the world, like I said before. But I think it should do the job. Okay, so now I'm going to go away and calculate if these thrusters are actually going to lift this thing on the planet. Because I don't want this thing to kind of crash into the ground at 300 meters per second. Because obviously that's not going to be good. Okay, so I've gone away and I've calculated how much thrust this thing has, how much uh, compared to how much it weighs, how much power these thrusters are going to use, and so on and so forth. So essentially, if I am not mistaken, because I referred back to my own video actually, which is pretty funny, uh, these are capable of lifting around about 71,000 kilos. And then given the fact that this thing only weighs what, I think I said 31,000 kilos? We should be fine. So we got definitely enough of those atmospheric ones to get us down to the planet. That's not a problem. Um, they do consume 4.8 megawatts if they are all running at full capacity, which they won't be because it's only going to be at about half. So it's probably about half of that. And each one of these small grid batteries is capable of pushing out 4 megawatts. So we have plenty of power to get this thing down to the planet. And then drive around for a fair amount of time but if i go into the cockpit here you can see that i have around about 12 hours worth of battery um i actually disconnected it probably prematurely because yeah i was just caught up in the moment and just did that so eh, it's a bit of a bummer but i think honestly 12 hours when you think about it like each one of these episodes is about an hour so that's like 12 episodes worth of power so Honestly, if I can't find magnesium in, in that time frame, I give up. I really do. So I think that should be enough power. But just to be safe, I think what I'll do is I will grab the components for a solar panel. 
and I'll put that on my person. So let's select that, select small grid, add it to the build planner. Let's construct that, and then hopefully I have enough room on my inventory to actually add that. What I will do though is get rid of everything that is on my person at the moment. Okay, so I should have enough components to build at least one solar panel. So worst case scenario, um, when I leave the planet after finding magnesium, I can just leave this thing on the planet and then just build myself a solar panel on the side here somewhere if I have a block that is capable of doing it. Suppose I could maybe place it on the back here. So let's just uh, place it here, I guess. Just temporarily and see if I have the components. Yes, I do. Let's grind this down. Cool, so I have the components for that. The second thing I need to do is obviously add in one of those survival kits. So I think I might do something really dodgy and just place it directly on top here. It's not really going to be pretty, but I think it should be at least functional. Or perhaps instead what I can do is just grab the components for it and maybe we can put like a small cargo container on this thing somewhere and dump all of the components into that. So let's see if that is actually possible. Well, we have a little bit of a problem. So it turns out I need an advanced refinery to then refine the uh, silver ore that I have into silver ingots to then build medical components. So. Yeah, that's a bit of a problem. We're going to have to kind of rock this thing without any survival kit. So <laughs> this is going to be interesting. I suppose what I should do though in the meantime is actually rename this antenna to something that actually makes sense. So we'll put this as the rover antenna and we shall save that. So it says enable broadcasting show ship name. No, we don't want to show the ship name. So I think it would just show the name of the antenna now. Yep, fantastic. Okay, cool. So let's find our ore detector. So we have our ore detector. And it's set to about 625 meters. Um, let us see if we can actually find the iron and the silicon in this asteroid. And we can. So, yeah, I honestly think we're good to go. So let's turn on our ion thrusters and lift off and see if we cannot get ourselves down to the planet. So, whoop, need to kind of dodge that. Whoop, whoop. This is... <laughs> this is really weird flying a rover. Uh, Alright, let's see if we can get ourselves down to the planet. Wow, this thing has a really limited amount of thrust. I think once I get down to the planet, then I can kind of concentrate on actually figuring out uh, the suspension settings but being in space at the moment with the gravity that we're in I just don't think it's really going to be very helpful if I do that now so yeah we'll head down to the planet and if I'm not mistaken we should be able to get to about 300 meters per second so yeah I really don't know at which point I should turn the atmospheric thrusters on to kind of slow me down but what I'm going to do is head down at full speed using the ion thrusters, turn them off, level the rover out, and then once I get to maybe a kilometer or two kilometers from the surface, then I dare say at that point, then I'll go ahead and turn on the atmospheric thrusters. And hopefully that should be enough distance to slow me down. If two kilometers isn't enough, then it's gonna be a very bad day. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, probably what I should do is let's change our view. Uh, can I make a blueprint out of this? Yes, I can. All right, so let's make a blueprint of that. Let's rename it to the All Rover, I guess. Sounds pretty good. Yep, we'll do that. All right, let's change the view again. And I'll see you guys when I'm about two kilometers away from the surface. Alright, so we're about 8 kilometers from the surface, but we're coming in hot, so I'm going to turn my thrusters on and hopefully I have enough thrust here to slow myself down. Oh, this is going to be close. One kilometer. 
coming up. Come on, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. Oh, and I really thought I was going to crash then. Okay. Um, let me... Ah, oh, what are my thrusters doing? Let's uh, turn these back to no thrust override. Okay. And let's let this thing level out. And I'll go back down to the surface. I put them to max thrust because I thought they actually weren't working because they weren't actually doing anything. So, all right, let's um, go back down to the planet. Yeah, so I think this is a much gentler approach. This is probably what I should have done the first time around. And then I probably wouldn't have had any issues. Ah, oh, we found Cobalt already. I really love this um, ore detector mod. So, yeah. <laughs> you are kidding. I found Magnesium already. What? Sh nah, surely that's not even possible. Well. There we go. Well, that was easy. Man, I am... Um, I'm honestly disappointed. I really just didn't want it to be that easy. That was the whole reason why I downloaded this mod because I thought it was really, really difficult. So the question is though, let's get down to the surface here. Now it seems to have disappeared. So it must be really far under the surface. Oh, there it is. There's, there's a deposit there and we are drifting. Let's touch down ever so gently. Turn both of these thrusters off. Oh, absolutely fantastic. This thing worked flawlessly. So let us get directly over this magnesium deposit. And I wonder if I've actually got enough power. Oh, Trey. I wonder if I've got enough power to actually get this thing you're kidding oh so that is interesting okay so let's park this thing up so let me just add my handbrake to the hot bar here quickly all right so we put our handbrake on pressing number three i should probably put that to position one because that's usually where it is on my rovers so the one thing that I was really wondering is like, okay, so underneath this white patch here that you can see where there is obviously ore deposits, the one thing I wasn't too sure about was are there multiple different ores in the same ore patch? Because I honestly can't remember that being the case on Earth-like or in this case, Planet Oz. So, because I've been playing on Pertam for so long now that I honestly just can't even remember playing on Earth. So, it turns out that with this mod, multiple ores spawn in the same deposit, although they are all at different depths. And it seems like magnesium is about 433 meters downwards. So, hmm. One thing I didn't do, though, is I didn't really bring any power kits or anything like that. But I think we should be okay. Alright, so we have a ton of digging to do to get down to this deposit all right so i've drilled down by about 650 meters our magnesium deposit is in that direction so i should just be able to drill straight towards it but as you can see i am running extremely low on energy and here we go i've finally reached the deposit so i think the safest bet at this point would be to go back wow look at that <laughs> It is totally and utterly dark in here. That's how far underground I am. 431 meters it is actually. So I'm going to head back to the rover, charge up, come back down, mine this um, magnesium, and then fly all the way back to space. And let's hope that I actually have enough hydrogen. Wow. I've got no oxygen. So, uh, yeah, this is... Um... <laughs> Definitely the most unplanned, unprepared trip I think I've ever taken. So, all right, let's head back to the rover and charge up. I've got to be really careful when I do this because one wrong move doing 300 meters per second and I will be squished like a bug on the side of this here tunnel. 
But also, one other thing I'd like to point out is, look how thick this vein of silicon is. It is massive. So, yeah, not only does that redistribute the ores, it also makes the veins of these ores so much bigger. And I always find these little transitions pretty cool as well. All right, let's head back in and recharge. Okay, so I've got enough charge. Let's head back down into our little burrow. Well, I say little. I guess it's little in diameter, but definitely not depth. And we have finally arrived. Let's grab some magnesium. Okay, so my inventory is full. We have about 3.77k. Honestly, I think that's going to be enough to build a meaningful amount of weapons. Uh, I can reverse engineer some of the thrusters. I think... I don't know, do some of the rifles and things like that need uranium? I think they actually might. So... I don't know what I'm going to do about that, but... Alright, let's, um... Go to this rover. And what I'm going to do is build this solar panel on the back of this thing. And they're just kind of... Do I turn it off or do I leave it on? Right, let's build this solar panel here. Cool. Now that that's built, let's go ahead and turn off the ore detector. And see if that is enough to charge the batteries. Okay, so I have a bit of a catch-22. So in order to find this thing, I've got my antenna on. Uh, so what I think I will do instead is I'll create a GPS marker new from current position. Yeah, I know I can create it through the chat, but I'm not going to because I just forgot. All right. <laughs> so we'll just make this our ore rover. Uh, we'll call this the Oz ore rover. Now that I have a blueprint of this thing, I can go ahead and make some more of these things. And I know that it works quite well. So we should be fine with that. Okay. So we have our two signals. Um, but as you can see, the battery here is only going to last 11 hours. So what I'll do is I'll find my antenna. I will turn that off, which is consuming 200 kilowatts because obviously the broadcast radius is 50 kilometers. I honestly didn't think they could go that far. All right. So there we go. We've got six days worth of power. And if we have a look at our solar panel, we are 8.45 kilowatts. And obviously that's because, you know, we're in the middle of a storm. I dare say once the storm passes, we should have plenty of power to charge the batteries. But just to be sure, I think what I'll do is stick around and wait for this storm to end. And then after that, we'll head back up to the respawn pod. Well, it doesn't look like this weather is going to end anytime soon. So, <laughs> you know what? I'm just going to send it and just leave the rover here. And uh, if it goes flat, it goes flat. Uh... I wonder if I turn it off if it's fine or actually let's find the batteries here and then just go recharge. Does that then mean that they're fully depleted current output? Yeah, that is basically the same as turning it off. So yeah, we'll leave it at that and yeah, let's head back to the respawn pod. Uh, where is the respawn pod? There it is. All right, let's head back. All right, and we have arrived at our destination. Wow, this place looks empty with the rover gone, so I'm a little bit sad to see it go, but uh, maybe we'll go back there eventually. Oh, you know what I just realized? I didn't actually mark the magnesium deposit, but I guess, you know, the rover is parked directly over the top of it, so that shouldn't be too hard to find again. All right, let's put this into the refinery, and can we actually refine this stuff? Let's see if we can. Well, turns out that we can. All right, so I'm going to let that manufacture a little bit of magnesium. And now that we have some magnesium, okay, let's see what weapons we can actually build here. Um, I might move away from this because it is quite loud. All right, let's have a look in here. Go to production, industrial assembler. I should be able to build all the weapons that I need with this thing. What is this? Uh, why is that green and red? That's interesting. Standard, high explosive. Oh, this must be part of these uh, Substitious's mod. Okay, that's pretty cool. Uh, what weapons can I actually build? So apparently they're under tools, which doesn't really make too much sense. What do we need here? We need platinum ingots. Okay, so 
I think what I will do here is try and find the thruster components that I managed to pillage from that wreck very early on in the series. So we have about 39 of those. Let's remove these, go to disassembling, put a thruster in there, um, and then maybe... So how much, how many ingots do I have now? So that gave us 0.13 ingots. You know what? I'm just going to disassemble all of these. So I'll put them all into the industrial assembler. assembler. Man, English is hard these days. Uh, put it in there. Let's just put them all in, I guess. Alright, so that is all of the small thruster components disassembled. Well, just regular thruster components, I would imagine. So how much platinum do we have now? So we've, I've got 5.33 platinum. Now, here is kind of the conundrum. I, I need to be smart about what I'm doing here. So I think what I'll do is... Okay, so my problem is... Oh, that's the um, rocket launcher. Of course that needs platinum. Um, so what is the elite rifle? I believe this is the precision rifle. Oh, no. I need single... I need silver ingots for that. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to build that. Uh, what other rifle? I can build the MR20 or we can build the MR50 automatic. Uh, or we've got the MR8B. Okay, I think I might go for this one because this one looks like it's the precision rifle and I do need precision. So we'll build, uh, let's go back to assembling. Let's build, I guess, five of these. So I didn't even need to disassemble those thruster components. And what I was going to say is that I will probably need those later on for some more thruster components so that I can take another rover to the moon and find myself some gold. Okay, so now that we have those built, let's build some ammunition for this thing. So what do we need? We need the MR8P magazine. So I might go for about 100 magazines of that. I think that should be plenty. And now that I have all the weapons that I need, we can take this thing over and finally check out that wreck, which is about roughly 33 kilometers in that direction. So I'll be back once these rifles are done and we are ready to go. All right, so slight little deviation in the plan. So I was planning on taking this ship out to that wreck. Although I kind of realized that I'm not really, I don't really have an abundance of power here. So let's just take a look at our batteries. So I've set the two batteries on the respawn pod to recharge. So they're gonna be recharged in 18 minutes, but this thing, this battery underneath the floor here is going to discharge in eight minutes or half that time, maybe less than half. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to build another two batteries. So let's build two more of these, although I select large grid, add those to the build planner, get rid of the survival kit. Uh, let's go shift to the mouse button, put those to production. I'll build those two batteries and I think when you build batteries, they're at about 30% charge. So hopefully that will give me enough charge that I can pull that out of those batteries, put it into the ship, and then let the solar panel basically... Actually, is the solar panel pointed towards the sun? Yeah, it is. So that'll let the solar panel charge the batteries in the base while I'm away, and that should hopefully be enough. Okay, so let's wait for these things to be built, and then... Well, the components to be constructed, and then I can finally place down my batteries, and hopefully we can get this show on the road pretty quickly. Alright, and that is both of these batteries complete. And I know you guys might be thinking, well, Garage, why didn't you just do this to charge the rover? And the only answer I have for you is this. Yeah, honestly, don't know why. Um, <laughs> I guess, you know, it is kind of cheating a little bit doing it this way. So I did want to build that solar panel. And honestly, I did kind of need it anyway. You can build like 20 of these batteries and sap the power out of that. But it's a massive waste of resources. So yeah, it's not really going to work out. So also while I was gone, what I did is I set these batteries here, uh, these old ones, to be auto. And then the batteries that are sitting on the ship, 
are set to recharge. So these two batteries on the ship will recharge in about eight minutes. These ones will drain out in about five minutes. So what I'll do is I'll wait till these get to about 5% and then I'll just kind of leave it. At that point, I'm kind of hoping that the batteries in the ship will have enough charge to get us to where we need to go. Because we only really need to go 33 kilometers. Park the ship there and then I dare say we're going to use the survival kit a million times. But yeah, we'll just have to kind of wait and see. So alright, I'll be back once the batteries are charged to an acceptable level. Okay, so the sun is going down pretty quickly. Um, we're not going to have too much sunlight left, so I want to get this show on the road. I have about 2.36 megawatts sitting in both of those batteries, so that should be plenty. If I'm not mistaken, it's around about 75% charge. Um, so, yeah. Uh, now, what I will do, though, is I will make sure that I grab all of the rifles and then put those into the inventory of the ship because chances are I am going to die a few times and I want to respawn back at the obviously the respawn pod and then be able to grab some more ammo and bits and pieces like that so all right let's um head off with that actually should I build more ammo I might actually build some more clips though all right so I've got enough magazines I think I'm going to probably store well let's store all of these rifles in the inventory for this ship I'll probably keep maybe 10 of these magazines on my person. I think that should be plenty, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we got 10 magazines. Uh, how many bullets do they have each? Let's just have a look. So each magazine has 10 bullets. So that's 100 bullets. Uh, is that enough magazines? Hmm. How many do we have? 29 plus 38, so we've got 67 magazines. You know what? I don't think that's going to be enough. I might actually make like 200 of these things, eh? Oh, hey, finally we have enough of these magazines. Man, they take so long to build. Look how slow it's moving. It's like one every four or five seconds or something like that. So I've been sitting here waiting around for about five minutes. Anyway, all right, let's unlock and let's get this show on the road because... Whoa, 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 whoa. Got. I turned my thrusters off. Hang on. Let's uh, reconnect. Disconnect. Let me. I want to break. F what the heck is going on here? Oh, okay. Yep. Yeah, sorry. I had my bottom thrusters turned off for some reason. Okay. All right. Let's um, not crash into the solar tower. And let's head over to the wreck and see what we can do. Okay, so I finally found the wreck again. It is sitting directly underneath that crosshair there. So I'm going to get the ship about as close as I can so that if I do have to respawn, I don't have to fly for ages to get back to the wreck. Seems like there's another one up there as well, so I might check that one out too. But for some reason... Oh, now it's working. But before, for some reason, when I got... Uh, so we're 2.6 kilometers. So yeah, last time when I got... Um, or when I was trying to look at it directly, it, it wasn't showing up. So I had to kind of move the camera at that angle and then it actually showed up on the screen. So it's very weird, hey, how the draw distances in this game work. Like when you tilt the camera like that, you can see it. But then when you're looking directly at it, it just disappears. So it can be quite hard to find this thing. And hopefully the sun stays out for a while so we can get this done relatively quickly. Okay, so I'm sitting around about 900 meters away from this thing, so if I get any closer, it'll probably start firing at me. So I think I might just... It seems like the weapons on this thing are set to like 600 meters or something like that. So I should be able to attack them and they won't fire at me if I'm at a certain range. So let's see if that is actually the case. Man, I can't see anything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to shoot this. Uh, this is going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought. I do usually like to use rocket launchers with these things, but... Yeah, I don't know. Just don't know really how I'm going to do this. Maybe my earlier plan of just circling this thing and waiting for it to run out of ammo is the only way to do it. But... Oh, it's starting to lead the target. 
like I said, this thing could have like a hundred boxes of ammo and then I could be flying around for like 20 minutes. But, you know what? I think it might actually be the best way to go. Ah, oh, don't kill me, don't kill me. And there's another gun underneath that one as well. Did he run out of ammo or did I just move out of his range? No, nah, still got ammo. pretty fun actually until it hits me then it's not so fun <laughs> yeah kind of like that <laughs> Alright, let's respawn here, and I wonder if I can get my stuff back. Let's, uh... Why am I floating? Ah, oh, there we go. Let's see if I can retrieve my body and my guns. And my tools. Um... Yeah. I didn't actually go ahead and remove my tools, which is... Ah! <laughs> body location, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, no, it's in range of the guns. Can I sneak past? Oh, you're kidding me. Alright, well, those tools, those guns, and those bottles are gone. So, uh, let me try and grab another gun. Okay, well, here we are doing the dance once more. So, I'm just trying to find an angle on this thing. Maybe if I can get the main body of the ship in between me and those guns, I might be able to get a lot closer than I normally would be able to. Okay, so if I'm not mistaken, they're on that other half of the ship. Okay, so I think from here I should be able to approach. But I'm also quite certain that that thing there has a few guns. Oh, oh, whoa. Oi. Health critical. Oh. <laughs> Man, this thing's got guns everywhere. Alright. Uh, that's mission failed. <laughs> oh. Can I just beeline it for the ship? Like, just, yeah, try and approach it as fast as I possibly can and hope that I don't get hit by some bullets and then do it that way? That might be a way to go. Alright. Attempt number... I've lost count now. I think it's number three. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, okay then. Look, I, I'm still convinced that... Oh, there's... There's a gun on that thing there too. So... I think this thing is like protected from every single angle. Like there are just guns everywhere. Maybe I might just be able to pick this thing off. Although, it's going to take me a very long time. Because every time I fire the gun, it has this kick to it. And I do believe there is a setting somewhere where you can remove that. Um... Oh no, we're 812 meters out. So, if I fire something, it's not actually going to hit. So, as I was saying, I, well, okay, so it looks like those guns are set to 800 meters, so that's annoying. Alright, let's just beeline it and see what we can do. Let's see if I can dodge the bullets and then... Oh! Oh, you are joking! I can't believe that worked! Okay, so... Let's see what we can do about this gun here. Now that I'm a bit closer, I think I can actually deal with this stuff. Where is it? There it is. 
Is that it? Yep. Oh no! Oh no! I was so close! Oh. <laughs> Alright, well, at least I know a way I can get back there. The only problem is I might actually run out of guns before we can do anything. <laughs> Uh. Alright, let's make another run at this. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> so, I think actually what I can do is I can take out this gun here. Uh, or can I? Because my body location is like 800 meters away. I could take out this turret, I reckon, from a distance, but I don't know if I could actually hit it. So, alright, let's try what I did last time, again. Uh, <laughs> it's not really going that well this time, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Oh, that was specky. Maybe I should try and get these guns first. Oh! <laughs> oh, this is just not going too well. Alright, um, I think what I might do this time is fly back and retrieve my weapons. Because I'm just wasting resources a lot here. Alright, so let's try this one more time. Whoa! Oh! <laughs> There's a gun on the bottom too! Oh... I really need to rethink my strategy here, eh? I just don't know if I have the skill set to do this. Uh, hmm, okay. How am I going to do this? Uh, uh, stop shooting at me! <laughs> uh, okay. Let's try this again. So, I need to avoid that weapon there. Fly in. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, stop. Ah, oh, there we go. Okay, now, where's... Where's my body? Ah, uh, I don't have one. Okay, maybe... I will go through the ship. Oh, I've got no tools, really? My body location is... Okay. Uh, how do I get rid of this block? There we go. Now, can I poke up far enough to retrieve my stuff? Oh! <laughs> what? Where did that come from? Alright, yeah, no, nah, we're gonna have to, um... Oh... We're gonna have to rethink this strategy here. I think... Um... Maybe I have to build some weapons of my own and then like some large grid weapons. All right, so let's respawn here. It is a shame that they're set to like 800 meters because I really can't do anything about these weapons. Uh, so that's, yeah, kind of annoying. How am I going to do this? Uh, I definitely can't retrieve my body because for some reason it's like poking up in space. Uh, man, that thing is just littered with guns. Alright, so attempt number... I've honestly lost count now. <laughs> uh, let's see, so my body is... 780 meters in that direction. And... Let's just continue firing on this until hopefully I can manage to do some damage. total darkness and I really can't see anything so as much as I hate to say it I think I'm gonna have to abandon this whole escapade um, I do have some ideas on how to get it done but I think they're kind of dodgy so one thing I could do 
is I could Okay, let so here here out my ridiculously crazy plan. So can I build um, do I have any stone left on this thing? Inventory. Okay, so I've got some steel plates. Let's grab some steel plates. So I only really need one steel plate, so let's remove the additional 15. And then what I will do is have one of these ready to go. And I am going to... Oh, see, that's the thing. I just can't even see what I'm doing anymore. Um... Okay, so in my crosshairs right now is basically where that thing is. So the plan here is to accelerate this block up to 300 meters per second and then place it down and let it go and then it should just slam into that weapon there. So let's see what happens. Ah, uh, no, I missed. <laughs> oh, this is really frustrating. Okay, so... I think my only option, really, is to just wait until the guns run out of ammo. Well, it stopped firing at me, so I don't know if that means it's run out of ammo or not. So let's approach with a modicum of caution. About as much caution as I can muster. And see what we have here. I swear there was a, a gun on the bottom though. Uh, okay, let's board the ship here. Turn on my lights. Oh, maybe I can retrieve a weapon here. But I don't like my chances. Alright, let's um, put the basic tools back on my hot, hot bar. Alright, so at least I have a grinder. But I don't know if that's really going to do much for me, really. Uh, I really need a weapon. Uh, ah, there we go. Fantastic. Now, I believe that there are guns on that thing over there. And I really need to quieten down these engines, hey? Okay, let's grind down this engine. And then hopefully that will quieten things down a little bit so you guys can actually hear what I'm saying. Awesome. And there should probably be another one on the other side. Let's get rid of this block because it's in my way. Ah, there we go. <laughs> Spider-Man! Uh, okay, let's get rid of this one. Right, there we go. Okay, so let's see, where is the other half of the ship? There it is right there. Okay, so I think I, if I'm not mistaken, there is a gun underneath the ship down there somewhere. Um, is it beneath, where is that other gun? I really would like to know that, but at least at this stage, I can actually approach the wreck from this direction. What is that? Oh, that's the actual Mayday signal. Alright, here seems to be the bridge. Pretty cool. Um, I'm really in a bad spot, aren't I? I really shouldn't be, like, flying around here. Um, but, ah, oh, well, what are, what are we going to do? Just send it. Now, is there a gun on that? There may be. Okay, let's uh, try and poke our head around the corner and see what we can find. Because I have a feeling there is a weapon here somewhere. Or 
or at the very least I think from here I can see those weapons or can't I maybe I just grind down the battery okay this is interesting have these run out of ammunition or something let's get rid of this battery because I mean if the grid doesn't have power access denied if the grid doesn't have power then how can it fire the weapons or maybe the weapons don't need power I'm not sure okay so I should be able to destroy this gun from here okay let's try this Aha, uh -huh, there's one down, although I don't think I have enough ammunition to get the other one. Well, let's try and get it as far as we can, I suppose. Or would destroying the conveyor be more efficient here? Uh, I really don't know. Let's try and destroy the gun, but I don't know if we'll be able to. Oh, uh, well, we're out of ammo. Um, man, these weapons are no joke. They are ridiculously strong. So I suppose I, I could potentially grind away that conveyor junction and then, you know, kind of go from there. But, oh, this is a large cargo container. All right, let's um, grind this down. Past the hack line. Let's weld her back up. And see if I cannot extract Energy all of the low. ammo. So it looks like we have nothing. So the Gatling turret has 10 ammo boxes. Well, that's good to know. Um, I don't know how much that helps me, but it's kind of good to know. All right, maybe what I can do, though, is build a block here um, so that I am protected from the gun. And then we can... Grind away this block. And then grind away this block. And then grind away the gun. Ha <laughs> ha! Yes! Oh, this is so cool. Uh alright. That one's dead. Now, I know there's another Gatling gun on the bottom of this thing somewhere. So, that's another gun that I'm going to have to watch out for. Now, is it underneath Energy here? Critical. Or underneath here? I think I might just fly around and just make sure there are no more guns left. So, this gun here is really angry at me. Look at him. <laughs> you can't do anything to me, buddy, because you have no ammo. Aha, so funny. Um, okay, is there a weapon on this thing here? I believe there might be. So, just to be safe, inventory full. I'm going to grind away this full. battery. Inventory full. Inventory. Inventory full. Inventory full. Inventory full. No energy. Oh, I got no energy. Where's my respawn pod? Okay. <coughs> Hang in there, buddy. Okay, let's get some charge and then we can bring the ship over and start doing some stuff. Alright, so I have moved the ship really close to the wreck so we can salvage some things, but I kind of noticed, and I, I didn't really notice this um, before because I was so caught up in trying to take this thing over, but... The vast majority of this is actually missing so this I believe is the center section this section there's like another section that connects to that after that and it's not that long if that makes sense but there is a section at the front here that is about I'd say up to about here long and it's just entirely gone so 
Yeah, I'm really kind of sad about that because I was honestly considering repurposing this wreck for my own purposes, but I mean, with 90% of it gone, I just don't really think it's worth it. So I actually have this thing as a blueprint. So it's created by... Yeah, so it's actually the EF382 Prometheus and it's created by this guy, Chabon. Uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but this ship is so much bigger than what this wreck is. Um, so I have read somewhere in some places that there are like booby traps on this wreck and potentially that is what has happened. The front section of the ship might have just completely exploded when I've gotten near it in the past, but I really don't know. Yeah, like I said, it's a real shame because I would have really liked to repurpose this ship for my own purposes. I thought, I reckon that would have been really cool. So, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Should I fully build this thing up again or should I just leave it and kind of gut it for all of its components? Well, let me know down in the comments, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Really hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly had a lot of fun trying to get to this thing and uh, take control of this wreck. It was definitely, yeah, a lot of fun. So, anyway, guys, I will see you next time.